Hello, everyone. I'm Rich Thayer, Documentation Manager in the Service Provider Technology Group. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of our Hidden Gems in Cisco iOS podcast series. This series talks about useful iOS features that most customers have but don't use, features that you might not be aware of but that you can use to be more productive and make better use of the devices and software you have in place. In today's session, we are talking about using MPLS VPNs with IP tunnels. Joining me is Russell Kelly, Technical Marketing Engineer from Cisco's Edge Routing Business Unit. Welcome, Russell. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Rich. Glad to be here. We're talking about using MPLS VPNs with IP tunnels to create secure point-to-point -point links through an IP core network. Russell, can you tell us uh, how this solution came about and how it will help Cisco customers? Yeah, sure, Rich. Uh, this particular use of uh, MPLS VPN, VPN tunneling uh, evolved as a solution for service providers and enterprises alike. Uh, who are migrating from existing separate infrastructures for different customers or departments to a converged MPLS VPN infrastructure. Uh, now, the important thing here is that they are migrating to this converged MPLS VPN infrastructure. However, they do not have a transit backbone uh, that is MPLS capable or label aware. Uh, now, this may be the case uh, when there's obviously only an IP or an internet protocol capable network or in a situation uh, for a service provider where um, they need to transit the backbone of another ISP, uh, but they cannot share label information. Uh, now, in cases such as this, uh, IP tunneling of these MPLS VPNs is required. Uh, this IP tunneling uh, backbone network, of course, must be still be, be capable of uh, supporting su uh, services such as uh, differential quality of service, or QoS, for the tunneled VPNs, and importantly, as these uh, IP backbones may or may not be seen as uh, trusted networks, it is very valuable to have the ability to secure these, uh, the private data within these MPLS VPNs as they traverse this backbone. And this is really done by encrypting these IP tunnels. And obviously, this helps uh, Cisco customers by giving them an easy way to extend their virtualized domains over any IP network. Um, and what, what makes uh, MPLS and tunneling the right technologies for this solution? Well, uh, using MPLS uh, for virtualization in the first place offers as a services rich and extremely scalable method uh, to provide uh, separation of services, uh, supporting mission-critical and time-sensitive applications uh, that all modern networks uh, now require. Uh, MPLS is really a proven technology, uh, and it's widely accepted and currently in operation in most, if not all, SPs and in many enterprise networks uh, currently. Uh, it's reliable and is seen as a secure method of um, uh, separating the customer uh, routing and customer networks. And now couple this, uh, this scalable virtualization method with the capability to, um, to offer these uh, VPNs over a non-MPLS-capable IP core uh, and now one has an extremely flexible, cost-efficient, virtualized WAN design that is very simple to configure. Uh, and now at the same time, you can uh, still maintain uh, support for the core infrastructure services such as uh, QoS, and you can keep the data secure. That makes a lot of sense, uh, especially with the increased uh, demand for bandwidth. Uh, can you explain a little about how this solution works? Sure. Uh, in very simple terms, uh, a point-to-point -point, uh, IP tunnel, and in most cases a GRE tunnel, or a multi-point GRE tunnel is configured between devices uh, to transport uh, the routing protocols that are required for an MPLS VPN solution, uh, such as uh, any sort of IGP or interior gateway routing protocols uh, like EIGRP or OSPF. Obviously, you need LDP and you need multi-protocol BGP uh, to advertise their VPN labels. Uh, multiple tunnels can be configured, uh, and a security component can be added to the solution uh, in the full mesh tunneled solution uh, such that you can encrypt these VPN tunnels. Uh, there are even cases uh, when you can use the BGP capabilities uh, itself to advertise the label information, uh, known as labeled BGP, thus eliminating the need for these uh, IGPs mentioned earlier and even the LDP running over the tunnel. Uh, this particular solution is known as inter VPN of a GRE, and it can provide uh, a way to scale these uh, IP tunneled solutions uh, even further uh, in a hub-and-spoke design and across uh, uh, autonomous system or AES boundaries. 
Uh, finally, there's another option as well, which is to use uh, Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol or L2TPv3 uh, as another IP tunnel to transport the MPLS VPNs. Uh, with platforms such as the ASR1000, as I mentioned, it, there's even options to encrypt uh, these uh, GRE and, and in the future L2TP v3 tunnels such that uh, the data transporting or uh, being transported over these uh, tunnels is uh, secure. Can, can you give me some uh, guidelines for when to apply this tunneling solution? Absolutely. Uh, there are different deployment scenarios where this uh, MPLS and we'll stick to GRE tunneling solution makes sense. Uh, in general, I would recommend the solution whenever a customer wants to extend um, an existing or an even uh, new virtualized uh, network over an IP uh, only backbone, of course. Uh, this IP backbone may or may not be self managed. Uh, and it's a really a cost-efficient and uh, extremely flexible method of extending or provisioning any organization's uh, virtualized uh, network topologies over um, any IP backbone, be it trusted or untrusted. Uh, additionally, this tunneling methodology relies really on the key principles of the IP stack, as now it's uh, really completely abstracted from the underlying infrastructure. So this solution can run over uh, any medium or any IP-capable transit network, as I said, uh, it could be uh, an encrypted IP core, it could be the internet, it could be a frame relay or even an ATM-based backbone. It really does not matter. Excellent. Uh, is this available on all Cisco platforms uh, and in all releases? Uh, this capability is supported on uh, the Cisco ISR or Integrated Services Router platforms uh, in the 12.4T based releases and on. It's also available in the ASR 1000 series routers uh, from iOS XE uh, release 2.2. Uh, this uh, is also supported on the uh, SIP 400 uh, line cards that go into the 7600 from uh, iOS release uh, SRB. Uh, so what do I need uh, to on a Cisco device to get started? Well, in fact, uh, for the ISRs and the ASRs, all you actually need is the uh, Enterprise K9 feature set. And uh, K9 is only actually needed if you really require uh, encryption of these uh, IP tunnels. Uh, for the 7600, uh, again, you do need the, uh, the Enterprise feature set. Uh, and for that platform, you do need the uh, SIP line card for the uh, tunneling capabilities. Uh, obviously, you need, if uh, again, if in securing these IP backbones, you do need a right to use IPsec license. Mm -hmm. So, all of these uh, MPLS VPN tunneling capabilities, um, are, these are all pre built in Cisco devices? Uh, yep, these are all available uh, out of the box. Um, everything you, you have, everything you really need to get started. Uh, you simply need to uh, configure it via the CLI, and all of this capability is built into iOS. Uh, all you need to do is, as I said, just configure it per the configuration and design documents. Uh, one just needs to be uh, cognizant to match performance uh, and the requirements of, of, of the solution uh, by positioning the throughput and aggregation requirements uh, in different parts of the networks to the, to the platform's throughput. Uh, the solution there is really a true end-to-end -end solution that can be tunneled completely, or it can even be a, a hybrid IP tunnel and traditional MPLS uh, VPN capable PE, uh, PPE network intercon interconnect. So you, you can mix and match the solution, uh, tunneling where required and, and using a traditional backbone in other places. Mm -hmm. Good. So are there any uh, configuration or operational considerations uh, that are more applicable for the IP tunneled VPN solution uh, when compared to a, a natively capable label switched core network? Uh, in general, no. Uh, as before, you just need to match the capabilities of the uh, tunneling uh, devices to the requirements of the network and different parts of the network. Uh, there's nothing special about this tunneled solution when compared to any other tunnel overlay solution, uh, i.e. you need to take uh, into account uh, MTU. Uh, you need to pay careful attention to MTU values and the QoS marking uh, retention in a tunneled environment uh, such that the core... Um, uh, does have the ability to still provide QoS-type uh, services uh, to this tunneled traffic. Uh, in a tunneled MPLS uh, solution, you can always raise the MTU for a tunnel uh, on the egress interface for the, to allow this uh, labeled traffic to pass. Uh, now, what this does is it stops uh, any sort of fragmentation and reassembly, which can be uh, a very heavy-lifting task to any router. 
Uh, additionally, the uh, MPLS MTUs uh, themselves can, can be set on an IP tunnel such that the IP traffic uh, still retains its MTU value, but the MPLS uh, traffic uh, can be passed uh, in, in a fragmentating um, uh, core environment. Uh, of course, you can always clear the DF bit or the do not fragment bit uh, on the IP traffic uh, as the um, on the PE router, uh, which has a view of this IP traffic. It's effectively the tunneling router. Uh, and with res- respect to QoS, uh, in iOS and in iOS XE, uh, the MPLS uh, exponential values or XP values are uh, reflected all the way to the GRE TOS header, uh, allowing for classification in the IP core. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the key requirements, really, to have this uh, QoS marking uh, retained uh, in this tunneled environment, uh, such that um, uh, traffic uh, can be honoured, uh, even in this IP core if required. And additionally, the uh, uh, the classified uh, uh, traffic can be classified and remarked uh, on either ingress or egress in this tunneled environment as per any traditional uh, MPLS VPN environment. Uh, from a configuration and management point of view, uh, the, the configuration is extremely simple, as mentioned earlier. Uh, you only really need to enable label switching on the tunnel interface. Uh, the MPLS VPNs can be managed using uh, any existing MPLS management tools, uh, such as uh, MDE, uh, because the IP tunnel was really transparent to the VPNs. Uh, you can also uh, plan or, or, or cater for brownout issues uh, for a tunneled environment where you have um, certain loss of connectivity or degradation in service. And you can do this by using IPSLA uh, and uh, EEM or Embedded Event Manager uh, scripting capabilities to actively monitor and, and make decisions um, based on packet loss uh, so you can route around any issue. So, uh, Russell, can you wrap up our session today with a story of a customer who has successfully deployed this layered uh, tunneling solution to solve a problem? Uh, sure, yeah, let's talk about some uh, customer deployments we're seeing. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, this uh, solution, uh, tunneling IP, uh, tunneling VPNs over IP infrastructure, is employed by uh, enterprises and service providers alike. Uh, both really have the same goals of providing an end to end virtualized network. <clears throat> um, in the case of SPs, it would be uh, you know, customer VPN separation, maintaining the customer VPNs from end to end. Uh, and in the case of the enterprise, one may look at it more as a departmental uh, separation end-to-end. Um, but really, they're both doing the same thing of transporting these VPNs over a part of their backbone that is not natively capable of setting up a label switch path. Uh, in the case of an SP, this may be a part of their backbone that is IP only uh, due to cost constraints. Or, uh, as mentioned earlier, another tiered SP that they are pairing with uh, is unable or unwilling to uh, share label information with them. Uh, thus, they have to set up an IP tunnel across this infrastructure. Uh, enterprises, uh, again, are just as prevalent users of this solution. Uh, quite often as a cost-saving realization, uh, as they can now tunnel their VPNs over uh, any cheaply procured IP infrastructure, even the Internet, with uh, the ability to, uh, to encrypt these IP tunnels, uh, alternatively, uh, enterprises look at it as a way of um, procuring just uh, a limited number of uh, IP transport or service provider provisioned uh, VPNs. Thus, they really just need to procure one VPN from an SP to transport multiple internal VPNs across uh, that part of their IP WAN. Uh, this really makes it... Um, uh, a perfect uh, migration strategy f- as well for enterprises. So now they have the ability on on these platforms where they really have a goal to get towards uh, you know a, a a natively MPLS capable backbone and network. However, parts of their backbone will always be uh, IP only uh, due to departmental um, separation or just capabilities in that network. Uh, but now they have the option to keep this uh, end-to-end solution um, right through um, from now as well as uh, during the migration path. Uh, Russell, where can people find out more about this solution? Uh, so it's uh, well documented on uh, CCO. Uh, in fact, uh, there's also a, a new site which is uh, cisco.com slash go slash tunneling. Uh, that has some information there as well. Uh, Thanks, Russell. Thanks for joining us. This was very informative. My pleasure. And we invite all of you to subscribe to our Hidden Gems in Cisco iOS podcast series to watch for future podcasts. 
From all of us at Cisco Tech Docs, enjoy exploring these hidden gems.